Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I am the Caffeinated Magician, um, and this is Theory Thursday. I'm trying to make a theory, a magic theory video every Thursday. If you haven't yet, check out my other Thursday video titled Theology Thursday. Um, it's a little story that I have and I tied it in with some soteriology, which is the study or the theology of salvation and the Bible as mentioned. But this is Theory Thursday. Uh, this is a different video for Thursday that I usually put out and we're going to be talking about the soap theory. It's a term um, came up by a magician, Daniel Madison. Uh, he's a really, really good magician. Um, popular, uh, widely known um, and made popular from uh, his work with Illusionist. He was with them for a long time. I don't know if he still is, but he's probably, in the, I think he's independent now. Uh, he has his own site, but very good magician. He was featured on Penn and Teller Fool Us. Um, and I give him a shout out, so shout out to you, Daniel Madison. For some reason, you actually watched this video. Love your work. Um, I'm going to put a link to where you can find him uh, in the video um, in the description box below. Now, the soap theory is basically this. It's the idea of when you're performing for a spectator to make it look like you're just the average person with a coin or with cards or whatever. When you give the impression that you're a master at something, that you're really good with coins, that you're a very good card manipulator, the effect isn't as strong and magical as it can be when you do a trick. So for example, if I take this coin and I place it in the hand like this, and make it disappear. It looks good and very fooling. It can cause people just to run away screaming because it's so visual. The soap fairy says you're making too much of a big deal out of it. Not that you can't just make this a nonchalant thing and then make it disappear, but the way of putting it in the hand is very unnatural. Nobody does this in real life. You say, look, I'm gonna put the coin in my hand like this to actually taught like that. I'm not that good with it, but it's, uh, that is actually a Vanish, uh, the DG Vanish by Daniel, or by Danny Goldsmith, um, and it's his take on a very popular retention Vanish. Um, I don't know the one who originated, uh, the only retention Vanish where you're, uh, pulling back, uh, the coin in order to make that visual vanish, but it was his take on that. But anyways, uh, what you want to do is, the, the, the show theory would say, do it in a way where it doesn't cause any suspicion that you're doing a magical move. It's very natural. One of the most natural ways to make a coin disappear is to take it and say, look, if I just squeeze the coin in my hand, I can make it vanish. Now, that's a very simple way to doing it, using a finger palm. Every magician knows that, or coin magician knows that one. Even the beginner, that's the very one of the very first things you learn. Actually, a very good introduction of coin magic would be Bobo's Coin Magic that can be bought at penguinmagic.com. I'll put a link in the description. Also, you can go to Illusionist, that's with an E, illusionist.com, and check out Eric Jones and his... Um, Metal Volume 1, and then there's 2, 3, 4, and now 5, uh, but start out with 1, and then 2, and then 3, of course. Um, I believe 3 is using uh, specific gaffs in coin magic and learning how to use them. Uh, 4 is specifically using the Quiver Purse, which I'm not going to get into, but you can buy that at Illusionist, you can look up that yourself. Um, and how to use that with uh, a shell and a flipper coin, which are also gimmicks. Um, and the uh, second one is just kind of a continuation of the first one in that they're just coin miracles, miracles, right, that you can do um, that don't require any special gimmicks or anything like that. But all that aside, 
how do you make a simple retention vanish this way natural? The most natural that I find is similar to what I just did. I say, watch, I take the coin, right? And if I just kind of squeeze, just like that, the coin disappears. So instead of doing this, which looks unnatural by, you know, taking the coin like this, this here is very quick and casual. So, and also I can show the coin, the hand open, but I don't have to do that. Nobody's gonna actually, you know, somebody's trying to make a coin disappear, they're not gonna go, look, my hand's empty. But you can say, um, let's try something. And in this three hand, I see an empty. If I just squeeze that coin, I can disintegrate it into tiny pieces. Of course, I can bring them all together and make it reappear. As a matter of fact, though, I can make it totally gone. Of course, it's right here. And I make it reappear. And that second part was uh, off of Metal 2 by Eric Jones. That's E R I C J O N E S. I'll put the link to, that, uh, to those downloads that you can buy at Illusionist down below in the description as well. Um, but this one is just the retention vanish that can be learned actually if you type in Wayne Houchin on YouTube and you look at his sinful, I'm trying to be edgy, I guess. But it's a very good trick. It's a point and can trick where you take a coin and you slam it through a can, but in the promise of explaining how the coin vanishes into the can, he explains how to do the retention vanish and exposes it in order to sell even a bigger trick and make it more amazing. Uh, but how to do that really quickly is just you're here and you pretend to put it in this hand and then you just close your fist and keep it in the other one. But if but done right, it looks like you're just taking the coin and you're placing it in the hand and it's gone. Now, with cards, uh, another thing is you don't when you're doing a false shuffle, let's say the uh, overhand false shuffle, you you wanna you wanna handle the cards in such a way where it doesn't look like you're proficient with a deck of cards, like you're just the average Joe doing magic. That's gonna make the magic more impactful. So let me get a deck of cards and I'll show you exactly what I mean. So, anyways, with the deck, uh, the false shuffle. Um, obviously, this is in, a, in any particular order, but anyways, when doing a false uh, overhand shuffle, you do not want to start the cards like this and then shuffle them. That gives away that you've got some skill and that you're really good at cards. People just go, oh, well, it's just sleight of hand. Um, of course it is, but you want to create the effect and the illusion that you're, it's just a miracle, right? I mean, of course, people know better, and it's entertainment, but that's the whole point of a magician. Just like, a, and this is another thing. With magic, I don't see it as lying, because it's the same thing with a movie, and there's Christian movies out there. They're not lying, they're creating, a, they're putting forth a character, and our character as a magician, as an entertainer, is a magician. We're an actor playing the role of a magician. That's the way to look at it. Um, at least that's how I look at it. People have a different opinion. Some people say, oh, you know, I'm, I'm a master at lying. I'm a master at deception. I like the word illusionist. I like the word sleight of hand. I like the word artist. Um, I shy, shy away from these kind of terms that make it so, so much of a dark art, you know, and make like a bad thing. I mean, it's entertainment. So, anyways, I'll put a little rant going back to the soap theory. You want to be casual with your cards. If you cut the cards like this, look. That makes it a little bit more like the average person is going to shuffle. And then you do your false shuffle. And it looks like you're just the average person shuffling the cards. I mean, because enough as it is, is the fact that you're doing this cascade of the cards. So if you do the cascade in addition to doing this at the beginning, it's going to be very suspicious. 
What if you negate that by doing something very natural, very, very unnatural, but yet natural for a regular person, and splitting the cards like this, it makes it more believable that you're doing a authentic shuffle or an authentic shuffle. Um, as opposed to now, when you're when you're doing normal shuffles, you can do this, All right? And you can even do this, but that's because you have nothing to hide. Uh, but even to mask that better and create that character of the magician is always shuffling your cards like this, or even better yet, when you're gonna do this thing through here, or uh, what's I can't even do it wrong. I've been doing it good for the whole time. Um, is doing this kind of a thing, making it seem like. You know, you're not the best with cards. You just know how to do the cascade. So that's the soap theory. Um, with explain with cards and with coins. I hope that gives you something to think about. I hope that it improves the effectiveness of your magic. That's why we call it a magic effect, a magical illusion, magic effect, just meaning something effective, right? Uh, but yeah, no, that's just a term that we throw around. Um, but it's just another word for magic trick or illusion. The effect just sounds more professional. Well, make sure you like this video. Comment below if you have anything to say. Subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that notifications button so you're aware of my next video pops up when it's uploaded. I really appreciate all your guys' support as usual. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed that video. Hope you found that helpful, like I said. Um, I am the Caffeinated Magician once again. This is Theory Thursday. Please check out my other video called Theology Thursday. I talk about a very interesting encounter or situation that happened today, and I tie that in with uh, the gospel. I think you'll find that very interesting, even if you don't agree. Make sure you stay happy, stay healthy, and stay caffeinated, and I will see you next time.